a Wikivideo Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Ricin. Ricin, a lectin produced in the seeds of the castor oil plant, Rikinus communis, is a highly potent doxin. A dose of purified ricin powder the size of a few grains of table salt can kill an adult human. The median lethal dose of ricin is around 22 micrograms per kilogram of body weight if the exposure is from injection or inhalation. Oral exposure to ricin is far less toxic as some of the poison is inactivated in the stomach. An estimated lethal oral dose in humans is approximately 1 mg per kilogram. Biochemistry Ricin is classified as a type 2 ribosome inactivating protein, whereas type 1 RIPs are composed of a single protein chain that possesses catalytic activity. Type 2 RIPs, also known as holotoxins, are composed of two different protein chains that form a heterodimeric complex. Type 2 RIPs consist of an A-chain that is functionally equivalent to a type 1 RIP, covalently connected by a single disulfide bond to a B-chain that is catalytically inactive, but serves to mediate transport of the AB protein complex from the cell surface, via vesicle carriers, to the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum. Both type 1 and type 2 RIPs are functionally active against ribosomes in vitro. However, only type 2 RIPs display cytotoxicity due to the lectin-like properties of the B chain. In order to display its ribosome inactivating function, the ricin disulfide bond must be reductively cleaved. Biosynthesis Ricin is synthesized in the endosperm of castor oil plant seeds. The ricin precursor protein is 576 amino acid residues in length, and contains a signal peptide, the ricin A chain, a linker peptide, and the ricin B chain. The N-terminal signal sequence delivers the prepropolypeptide to the endoplasmic reticulum and then the signal peptide is cleaved off. Within the lumen of the ER the propolypeptide is glycosylated, and a protein disulfide disomerase catalyzes disulfide bond formation between cysteines 294 and 318. The propolypeptide is further glycosylated within the Golgi apparatus and transported to protein storage bodies. The propolypeptide is cleaved within protein bodies by an endopeptidase to produce the mature ricin protein that is composed of a 267 residue A chain and a 262 two residue B chain that are covalently linked by a single disulfide bond. Structure The quaternary structure of ricin is a globular, glycosylated heterodimer of approximately 60-65 cada. Ricin toxin A chain and ricin toxin B chain are of similar molecular weights, approximately 32 cada and 34 cada, respectively. While other plants contain the protein chains found in ricin, both protein chains must be present in order to produce toxic effects. For example, plants that contain only protein chain A, such as barley, are not toxic, because without the link to protein chain B, protein chain A cannot enter the cell and do damage to ribosomes. Entry into the cytoplasm Rice and B chain binds complex carbohydrates on the surface of eukaryotic cells containing either terminal N acetyl galactosamine or beta 1,4 linked galactose residues. In addition, the mannose type glycans of ricin are able to bind cells that express mannose receptors. RTB has been shown to bind to the cell surface on the order of 106 108 ricin molecules per cell surface. The profuse binding of ricin to surface membranes allows internalization with all types of membrane invaginations. The holotoxin can be taken up by clathrin-coated pits, as well as by clathrin-independent pathways including cavioli and macropenocytosis. Intracellular vesicles shuttle ricin to endosomes that are delivered to the Golgi apparatus. The active acidification of endosomes is thought to have little effect on the functional properties of ricin. Because ricin is stable over a wide pH range, degradation in endosomes or lysosomes offers little or no protection against ricin. Ricin molecules are thought to follow retrograde transport via early endosomes, the trans-Golgi network, and the Golgi to enter the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum, for ricin to function cytotoxically. RTA must be reductively cleaved from RTB in order to release a sainteric block of the RTA active site. This process is catalyzed by the protein PDI that resides in the lumen of the ER. Free RTA in the ER lumen then partially unfolds and partially buries into the ER membrane. 
where it is thought to mimic a misfolded membrane-associated protein. Roles for the ER chaperones GRP94, EDM and BIP have been proposed prior to the dislocation of RTA from the ER lumen to the cytosol in a manner that utilizes components of the endoplasmic reticulum-associated protein degradation pathway. IRAD normally removes misfolded ER proteins to the cytosol for their destruction by cytosolic proteasomes. Dislocation of RTA requires ER membrane integral E3 ubiquitin ligase complexes, but RTA avoids the ubiquitination that usually occurs with IRAD substrates because of its low content of lysine residues, which are the usual attachment sites for ubiquitin. Thus, RTA avoids the usual fate of dislocated proteins. In the mammalian cell cytosol, RTA then undergoes triage by the cytosolic molecular chaperones HSC70 and HSP90 and their co-chaperones, as well as by one subunit of the proteasome itself. That results in its folding to a catalytic conformation, which depurinates ribosomes, thus halting protein synthesis. Ribosome inactivation RTA has an end glycosylase activity that is responsible for the cleavage of a glycosidic bond within a large RNA of the 60S subunit of eukaryotic ribosomes. RTA specifically and irreversibly hydrolyzes the end glycosidic bond of the adenine residue at position 4324 within the 28S RNA, but leaves the phosphodiester to backbone of the RNA intact. The ricin targets A4324 that is contained in a highly conserved sequence of 12 nucleotides universally found in eukaryotic ribosomes. The sequence, 5 aguagagaga 3 termed the sarsin ricin loop, is important in binding elongation factors during protein synthesis. The depurination event rapidly and completely inactivates the ribosome, resulting in toxicity from inhibited protein synthesis. A single RTA molecule in the cytosol is capable of depurinating approximately 1,500 ribosomes per minute. Depurination reaction Within the active site of RTA, there exist several invariant amino acid residues involved in the depurination of ribosomal RNA. Although the exact mechanism of the event is unknown, key amino acid residues identified include tyrosine at positions 80 and 123, glutamic acid, at position 177, and arginine at position 180. In particular, ARG-180 and GLU-177 have been shown to be involved in the catalytic mechanism, and not substrate binding, with enzyme kinetic studies involving RTA mutants. The model proposed by Mozingo and Robertus, based on X-ray structures, is as follows. Toxicity Ricin is very toxic if inhaled, injected, or ingested. It can also be toxic if dust contacts the eyes or if it is absorbed through damaged skin. It acts as a toxin by inhibiting protein synthesis. It prevents cells from assembling various amino acids into proteins according to the messages it receives from messenger RNA in a process conducted by the cell's ribosome that is, the most basic level of cell metabolism, essential to all living cells and thus to life itself. Ricin is resistant, but not impervious, to digestion by peptidases. By ingestion, the pathology of ricin is largely restricted to the gastrointestinal tract, where it may cause mucosal injuries. With appropriate treatment, most patients will make a decent recovery. Because the symptoms are caused by failure to make protein, they may take anywhere from hours to days to appear, depending on the route of exposure and the dose. When ingested, gastrointestinal symptoms can manifest within six hours. These symptoms do not always become apparent. Within two to five days of exposure to ricin, effects of ricin on the central nervous system, adrenal glands, kidneys, and liver appear. Ingestion of ricin causes pain, inflammation, and hemorrhage in the mucous membranes of the gastrointestinal system. Gastrointestinal symptoms quickly progress to severe nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and difficulty swallowing. Hemorrhage causes bloody feces and vomiting blood. The low blood volume caused by gastrointestinal fluid loss can lead to organ failure in the pancreas, kidney, liver, and GI tract and progress to shock. Shock and organ failure are indicated by disorientation, stupor, weakness, drowsiness, excessive thirst, low urine production, and bloody urine. Symptoms of ricin inhalation are different from those caused by ingestion. Early symptoms include a cough and fever. 
when skin or inhalation exposure occur, ricin can cause an allergy to develop. This is indicated by edema of the eyes and lips, asthma, bronchial irritation, dry, sore throat, congestion, skin redness, skin blisters, wheezing, itchy, watery eyes, chest tightness, and skin irritation. An antidote has been developed by the UK military, although it has not yet been tested on humans. Another antidote developed by the US military has been shown to be safe and effective in lab mice injected with antibody-rich blood mixed with ricin, and has had some human testing. Symptomatic and supportive treatments are available for ricin poisoning, but there is no commonly available antidote for ricin available. Existing treatments emphasize minimizing the effects of the poison. Possible treatments include intravenous fluids or electrolytes, airway management, assisted ventilation, or giving medications to remedy seizures and low blood pressure. If the ricin has been ingested recently, the stomach can be flushed by ingesting activated charcoal or by performing gastric lavage. Survivors often develop long-term organ damage. Ricin causes severe diarrhea and vomiting, and victims can die of circulatory shock or organ failure. Inhaled ricin can cause fatal pulmonary edema, or respiratory failure. Death typically occurs within 3-5 days of exposure. Although there is no antidote currently available for ricin poisoning, vaccination is possible by injecting an inactive form of protein chain A. This vaccination is effective for several months due to the Bodhi's production of antibodies to the foreign protein. In 1978 Bulgarian defective Vladimir Kostov survived a ricin attack similar to the one on Georgi Markov, probably due to his Bodhi's production of antibodies. When a ricin-laced pellet was removed from the small of his back it was found that some of the original wax coating was still attached. For this reason only small amounts of ricin had leaked out of the pellet, producing some symptoms, but allowing his body to develop immunity to further poisoning. The seeds of Rechinus communis are commonly crushed to extract castor oil. As ricin is not oil-soluble, little is found in the extracted castor oil. The extracted oil is also heated to more than 80 degrees Celsius to denature any ricin that may be present. The remaining spent crushed seeds, called variously the cake, oil cake, and press cake, can contain up to 5% ricin. While the oil cake, from coconut, peanuts, and sometimes cotton seeds can be used as either cattle feed and or fertilizer. The toxic nature of castor beans precludes their oil cake from being used as feed unless the ricin is first deactivated by autoclaving. Accidental ingestion of Rechinus communis cake intended for fertilizer has been reported to be responsible for fatal ricin poisoning in animals. Deaths from ingesting castor plant seeds are rare, partly, because of their indigestible seed coat, and, because the body can, although only, with difficulty, digest ricin. The pulp from eight beans is considered dangerous to an adult. Roiber and Hurd have written that close examination of early 20th century case reports indicates that public and professional perceptions of rice and toxicity do not accurately reflect the capabilities of modern medical management. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?